After the Raspberry Pi 400 was launched earlier this morning, there was a lot of discussion over the thermals and performance of the upgraded 1.8 GHz system on a chip inside. In this video, I'm going to test overclocking, performance, power consumption, and thermals on the Pi 400. No red shirt, Jeff. Absolutely not. Whew. A few other reviewers did some tests and found the Pi 400 was able to stay cooler than a Pi 4 Model B inside a Flerk passive heatsink case, but it wasn't quite as cool as a Pi 4 with an ice cooling tower. I wanted to see if there's any level at which the CPU gets near throttling, so I set up a test scenario and started measuring temperatures, both internally and with my Seek IR camera. I took this thermal image of the board before running any tests at idle, and the exterior of the keyboard is basically indistinguishable from the environment around it. Plastic isn't the best thermal conductor anyways, and later I found that most of the heat output goes through the ports in the back and the vent on the bottom. I used the command on the screen to write time and temperature data into a CSV file so I could graph it later. Then I installed and ran stress ng to load up all the four CPU cores on the Pi for 30 minutes at the default 1.8 GHz clock speed. The maximum temperature the processor reached was 52 degrees Celsius, though the top surface of the keyboard never went above 31 degrees, according to my Seek thermal camera. The bottom was only slightly warm, and the ports on the back were warm to the touch, but not even close to the searing heat you can get touching some parts on the Pi 4 when it's running a benchmark. But I read in a Tom's Hardware review by Les Pounder that he was able to get his Pi 400 to run at 2.2 GHz, so I figured I had to try too. I first tried overclocking in 2.147 GHz, which I did on the Compute Module 4. I edited the boot config text file and added the lines overvoltage equals 6, arm freak equals 2147. Then I saved the file and rebooted, but the Pi would lock up at some point during boot. I reduced the freak, or clock speed, to 2000, and that allowed the Pi to boot, but I had a need, a need for speed. So I dug deep into the warranty voiding options bin and pulled out the force turbo option. To increase the CPU voltage beyond 6, you have to set force turbo equals 1, but doing that can also void your Pi's warranty, so you've been warned. Anyways, I set force turbo to 1, and then over voltage to 8, which is the maximum allowed setting, and arm freak to 2200. I saved the file, rebooted the Pi, and it was a success. I ran the same stress NG test again for 30 minutes, and here's the temperature graph. It reached a peak of 63 degrees Celsius, which is still well under the throttling temperature. For comparison, check out the same graph from my overclocked benchmarks on the Compute Module 4 with a massive fan, but no heatsink. Without a fan, the Compute Module 4 reaches 75 degrees Celsius and beyond, and usually ends up throttling the CPU when the Pi is overclocked. It's great to see the passively cooled, silent Pi 400 can keep from throttling even when it's overclocked to 2.2 GHz. Also, what good is an overclock though if the Pi 400 burns your hands? Well, I have good news. Here's a thermal image of the keyboard after 30 minutes of stress at 2.2 GHz. The top was still slightly warm, but it wasn't an issue at all. The bottom was actually a little warmer now, kind of like the back of your phone after you're watching some streaming videos, but it wasn't uncomfortably hot. The ports on the back still showed the highest external temps overall at 42 degrees Celsius. Another important difference from the Pi 4 Model B, it seems like the microSD card itself doesn't get quite as hot either, though I only measured that by touch. And that's maybe due to the fact that the system on a chip's heat is transferred out more through the heatsink than the Pi board itself. I also ran a set of Pharonix CPU benchmarks, specifically this benchmark that I run on all my Pi 4s, and here are the results at 2.2 GHz compared to an actively cooled Pi Compute Module 4 running at 1.5 and 2.0 GHz. Performance scales pretty much linearly with respect to the clock speed, which is to be expected with the exact same CPU. I did some informal testing with YouTube and found that playing back videos at 1080p was much more enjoyable at the 2.2 GHz clock though doing things like switching between full screen and windowed playback was still a little bit slow. I also measured the average power consumption while the CPU was at 1.8 and 2.2 GHz, and it looks like it's pretty close, though the 2.2 GHz clock with Force Turbo uses about 0.01 amps more power at idle and 0.10 amps more power at full tilt. Here's idle power consumption, first for the 1.8 GHz clock showing 0.5 amps, then for the 2.2 GHz clock showing 0.51 amps. 
And here's power consumption at both speeds when running Stress and G with the 1.8 GHz clock using 1.2 amps and the 2.2 GHz clock using 1.3 amps. What about faster speeds though? I don't think you can go beyond 2.2 GHz, at least not with the current chip or the current firmware. I tried 2.4, 2.3, and 2.21 GHz and none of those resulted in a full boot. I went back to 2.2 GHz and the Pi 400 has been running stable all day. If you haven't already seen it though, check out my full teardown video of the Pi 400 where I show the heatsink and all the other parts inside. The design of the Pi 400's giant heatsink lets you run the Pi 400 with any workload and not really run into the danger of overheating. It looks like the thermal design of this Pi is the best yet. Of course, other Pis to this point haven't really had a heatsink or fan included. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling. I reduced the freak or quack, 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 the bottom was noticeably, no, noticeably, yeah. Most of the heat output goes through the, oh, there's a text message on my phone and I can't read the script. I also measure, measured the, oh, oh, that's long.